Robert in maple, I'm going to say maple syrup, <laughs> Maple Ridge, British Columbia writes to me, I recently obtained some very rare speakers, Jumatite CR610s, uh, that were made here in Vancouver in the early 1980s. They feature a downward facing aluminum ribbon that covers the audio spectrum from 600 hertz on up. Nice. They are the only speakers to rival my beloved Quad ESL 57s, which are not planars, they are electrostats. I've come to believe that the ribbon design philosophy is the way to go. I noticed the FR30s and FR20s also use ribbon technology. I'm just curious as to why more speaker designers do not incorporate this very obvious superior principle. Is it cost? Is it some idiosyncrasy or weakness in the sound that I am deaf to? <laughs> it's, it's cost. There's a couple of things going on. These, this is the FR20s. And these speakers use a planar a ribbon mid-range and tweeter. And that's expensive. Those drivers are not cheap. They are also, as I have come to learn, technically difficult to integrate properly. When I was at Genesis during the 90s and the years before that with my friend Arnie at Infinity and the work that we did together, mostly at Genesis, but I did help build electronics for Infinity, I learned a lot about ribbons and planar drivers and very tricky pieces to work with, and they are expensive. So that's the main reasons. What, what I've learned from Chris, for instance, Chris struggles over this tweeter and the mid-range, but mostly this tweeter. I have watched him go through measurement after measurement after measurement, and he gets down to these fine details. We're measuring distortion, transient response, um, uh, sensitivity, and he, he goes nuts. I mean, things like with uh, rippling the edges lowers the distortion. Half of the stuff he does, I don't even understand. He explains it to me in very kind ways, and it sort of makes sense to my engineering background, but I'm not a speaker designer. But I can tell you, this thing is a work of art that every single detail, as simple as this driver is, he goes through the types of magnet, how close they are, the cavity, this whole shape of the cavity, everything about this uh, because of its kind of wide dispersion is, is a challenge. And it's a heck of a lot easier for a speaker designer to plop in a dome mid-range. <laughs> done, right? Fix up the crossover, you're done. This takes skill, art, and money to make it work. But when it does, <gasps> you're right. It is the loveliest sound you've ever heard, and it's worth the extra effort. So there you go. All right. Thanks for the question. Talk to you later.